My name is Cody Langness. I'm an Enterprise Technical Support Analyst for Dell SonicWall. Today I'm going to show you how to utilize the Packet Monitor utility to analyze packets that are coming into your firewall to determine whether or not your SonicWall is forwarding them to a downstream machine or not. The Packet Monitor allows you to analyze both ingress and egress packets separately by monitoring intermediate packets. That's very useful. In addition, you get interface specific information. What interface did it come in? What interface did it leave out of? You also get drop codes and module IDs from the Sonic Wall. That's very useful if the Sonic Wall is dropping traffic to determine what engine is actually dropping that traffic. You can go and determine whether or not something is misconfigured. You also have the ability to export this as a libpcap format so that you can analyze that packet capture using Wireshark, which is an industry standard utility. And on top of that, you have the ability to export the packet capture in HTML or text version so that you can also see a breakdown of that packet capture with SonicWall specific information and have that saved to a file. I've logged into my firewall and I've navigated on the left to System Packet Monitor. This is exactly what I should expect to see when first logging into a firewall and configuring a packet capture. If I were to simply start a capture before monitoring anything, I'd see a lot of junk data on the line, information I don't actually care about. I'm going to stop this capture, and you'll see that I've already captured 592 packets without doing anything. We're going to hit clear, and we're actually going to configure a capture that makes sense to us. I'm going to start under the monitor filter tab. Do not check this first box. If you do, nothing you're going to configure will actually be utilized. The ether type is very important to specify if I don't want to see other kinds of junk data on the wire other than internet protocol traffic. I just want to see IP, which is IPv4. The IP type in this case is going to be TCP because I'm going to monitor an FTP session coming into my firewall and find out why it's not passing to the downstream server. The source IP address I'm going to leave blank. Source port is going to be random. I'm also going to leave that blank. I do know the destination port that the traffic is going to come in on. That's going to be port 21. I'm not transforming that port. If I was, I might consider a different way to configure this packet capture. I am, however, going to leave this box checked. Enable bidirectional address and port matching. That way, return traffic from my server, where the source port is going to be switched. It's now going to be 21. Uh, it's going to be switched with the destination port. Uh, that will also be monitored in the packet capture. Under my display filter, I don't want anything filled out, but I do want all of the boxes checked. If I put something in here, I will only be able to see part of my packet capture. We don't want to narrow it down, so we're going to leave all of this empty, and we're going to leave all of these boxes checked. Under Advanced Monitor Filter, I'm going to check everything. I want to see firewall generated packets in case my sonic wall sends a reset packet. I also want to see intermediate packets and any intermediate traffic that applies. If the sonic wall breaks down the packet into multiple packets when viewing it, I would like to see where in that line this traffic does get dropped. I'm going to press OK to save all of those changes. and I'm going to press Start Capture. You can see here what I've actually done is I've punched in FTP and that public IP address into my browser. I'm not getting a response at this time. Now if I come back here to my packet capture, I don't actually see anything on the capture because this page is not dynamic. It doesn't refresh on its own. I'll need to click the refresh button. And here I can see that my firewall has been dropping packets from uh, that have been coming in on port 21 to my public IP address. If I scroll down, the sonic wall will give me a packet detail section. At the bottom of this packet detail section, you'll find it has its own scroll bar. I will find a drop code and a module ID. Every one of these drop codes is different based on the firmware you're running. So it's important to check the firmware version that you're running on. In my case, I'm running on what is currently an early release version of firmware 5.9. I'm going to go to the SonicWall's knowledge base. In the SonicWall's knowledge base, 
if I search for drop code, the first thing that pops up is an explanation of drop code and module ID output values, and that's the article that I have here. In my case, I'm going to look for the latest 5.9 drop codes. Module IDs are listed at the top. Drop codes are listed in the second section. In my case, the drop code was 40. Enforced firewall rule. What this tells me is that there's a firewall rule that's blocking my packets. Let's find out if that's correct. On the left, we're going to navigate to firewall, access rules. We're going to use the matrix to select from WAN to LAN, which is where my server downstream resides. I do have a rule that says traffic to my X1 IP that comes in on FTP, which is port 21, is allowed. But this rule is not enabled. I'm going to check this rule, and now that rule is enabled. Let's go back to System, Packet Monitor, hit Clear, and we're going to try again. I'm still not able to access my server. Perhaps there's another reason. When I come back to System Packet Monitor and I click Refresh, this time I see that the traffic is not being dropped, but neither is it being forwarded. The first packet says it was consumed by the SonicWall's logic, and the rest were received. This indicates the SonicWall didn't actually have anywhere to send the traffic. It may be that my NAT policy is not correct if this is the case, so we're going to go check. Network NAT Policies. Now I do see that I have an inbound rule that says that whenever traffic comes to my X1 IP, for the FTP port, I send it to the option server old. However, server old is not the server that I actually want to send that traffic to. I want to send it to server new. Perhaps server old is something that I no longer have in my network. If I come back to system packet monitor and I clear that traffic and I try again, I now get much quicker the fact that I wasn't able to reach that site. If I refresh the packet capture again, I see something new. I now see that packets came in from the outside to my public IP address on port 21 and that that traffic was in fact forwarded to a machine downstream on my X0 interface. And in fact, packet number two is the breakdown packet because I'm monitoring intermediate packets. This tells me that I did in fact forward that packet out my X0 interface. These are the ports I sent it with and I sent it to this downstream IP address. When I take a look here I no longer see a drop code. I do see that that SYN packet was forwarded. So all of this indicates that there was communication. In fact I even see packets returning from the X0, returning from the downstream machine, and being sent back. So I'm going to export this packet capture in Wireshark. And I'm going to open it in Wireshark, and Wireshark tells me exactly what happened. I sent SYN packets to the downstream machine, but the downstream machine sent me reset packets. That means that now, my downstream server is the culprit. He's the one who is not allowing that connection to go through. Or it could just be that the FTP service on that server is not enabled. However, what we now know is that this is no longer a problem with the sonic wall. This is now a problem with the server. Once the problem with the server is resolved, communication will flow just fine because the traffic is already passing through the sonic wall. To learn more about Dell SonicWall products, you can visit us at software.dell.com forward slash solutions forward slash network hyphen security. For more video tutorials, you can visit us at sonicwall.com slash us slash en slash support.